Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. My guest today is the Minister of Foreign Affairs of South Korea, Mrs. Kyung Wang Kang. Thank you very much for uh, being with us. Thank you. Very happy to be here. Obviously, the world has been uh, watching nervously, I should say, what has been happening in the Korean Peninsula. We've seen North Korea uh, conduct several tests, uh, nuclear tests, uh, launching of uh, missiles. And we've seen uh, exchanges between the US president, and the North Korean leaders, and some people are really worried that this could be the next war and that this could, in addition, be a nuclear war. How realistic is that? Well, first of all, um, the North Korean nuclear missile issue is the global security challenge. And it challenges not just those of us in the Korean Peninsula and Northeast Asia, but the entire global community, which is why the global community through the Security Council has adopted a series of sanctions measures uh, to every provocation. The international community has been very resolute in adopting, in meeting those provocations with further sanctions, the latest being 2375, which is the latest in a series of nine sanctions measure on North Korea. Um, my government, my president is very clear, there must not be another war on the Korean Peninsula. We are a country that grew out of the total destruction of war to build a model democracy and a thriving economy. And this not, must not be disrupted by another war on the Korean Peninsula. We need to find a way to resolve the issue in a peaceful manner. It's still and time. This, there is still time for that. There is still time. The sanctions uh, are not a goal in themselves, but a tool to force the message on North Korea that this is not sustainable. They must stop and come to the dialogue table for a political and diplomatic way out of the situation. But for now, uh, their response has been no, essentially. I mean, do you think that despite the bluster, maybe, they are listening? They, they listen very carefully. And by their own admission, they're not quite there yet. And, and depending upon whom you talk to, how much more time do we have? It varies. But the one very clear thing is that they've been accelerating um, the pace of advancements in their nuclear and missiles program. And so that's very clear which is why then it is even more urgent that the international community really stand as one in implementing these sanctions and sending the clo a very you know, clear message to North Korea that the whole of the international community is now is concerned and, and, and it must heed the political will of the international community, which is to stop. The sanctions res resolutions are very clear. They, North Korea will not be accepted as a nuclear power. Uh, we will find a way to complete, verifiable, and irreversible denuclearization. So uh, a big question is whether North Korea is already a nuclear uh, power. Pyongyang claims this is the case. Uh, the CIA chief Mike Pompeo recently said North Korea could be, I'm quoting him, months away from perfecting the ability to strike the US with a nuclear weapon. Do you share that assessment? As I said, the assessment vary. Uh, well, what is so, your government's assessment? Well, I think you, depending on the nuclear, uh, the experts you speak to, and I am not the, the, uh, the final voice on this speaking on behalf of the Korean government, but one thing is clear is that they are fast approaching that threshold. Uh, but they do have nuclear capabilities. And now, uh, would that come to a situation where they a de facto nuclear power? That is unacceptable. Uh, and and the, the, uh, the North Korean as a nuclear weapon state will not be accepted. Um, and this has been made clear through a series of resolutions. It is not just our position, the US position. It's the position of the whole of the international community. What about the US uh, president's uh, war of words with mm -hmm. uh, the leader in uh, Pyongyang? Mm -hmm. I mean, he uh, again said that U the US was fully prepared uh, to uh, declare a war, uh, that we're seeing you know, uh, claims by the military that it's readying its bombers. I mean, are you concerned? Because again, you are the primary target 
we would assume, of such a war. Are you concerned that the U.S. is maybe provoking a war? I think the um, President's uh, statements is an indication of his strong desire to find a solution to this global security Not challenge. Not to fight the war? The military options, uh, I think we need to clearly understand what does that mean. I think you know, the military exercises, as recently um, had around the Korean Peninsula, are designed to put the pressure on North Korea, are designed to, to demonstrate to North Korea that we have the capability, um, should anything happen, should it decide to, you know, to do something, we are ready. We have a very robust military preparedness, combining the defense posture, the combined defense posture between the US and Korea as military allies, Korea's own defense posture. And so that demonstration is not only designed to assure our people that we are, you know, the, the people will be protected, but to send the message of deterrence to North Korea. Summer's and that is meant to reinforce the, the pressure on North Korea to come to the dialogue table. Some, including uh, President Trump, well, it was before he was president and the leading uh, opposition mm -hmm. uh, party are saying, actually, this should include be bringing back mm -hmm. U.S. nuclear weapons to South Korea. Your president has clearly opposed this option. Why mm -hmm. not? Well, tactical nuclear weapons were once on the Korean Peninsula. Uh, in 1991, with North Korea, we committed to denuclearizing the Korean Peninsula and the American tactical nuclear weapons were withdrawn. I think we are very assured of the uh, nuclear umbrella provided by the United States. Uh, we are assured of what is called extended deterrence that the US uh, provides to the Korean Peninsula. And I think we, the, the idea of bringing back tactical and nuclear weapons to be weighed on all fronts, with military effectiveness, uh, the political considerations, uh, strategic considerations, what it means domestically, what it means vis-a-vis uh, -vis our relations to the countries around the region. And by all accounts, it's, it's not the best option. I think the best option is to further increase the expanded deterrence that the, that the U.S. has clearly committed uh, and continues to give to the Korean Peninsula. Uh, to, to go back maybe to, uh, maybe uh, I'm assuming uh, you have been studying the leadership in, in Pyongyang and the world is wondering, what are the intentions of King Jong-un? What does he want? Does he want to preserve his regime and therefore become a nuclear uh, player because he's seen what's happened to other regimes that have given up mm -hmm. uh, such weapons? Or do you think maybe he has other things in mind that could include maybe uh, gaining control of uh, South Korea? Or what, do you, what is your reading of his? Well, I think all of the points that you uh, are, are possible um, interpretations and, and some of their own statements state that. Uh, but what is together clear is that they, they, they're very um, insecure about uh, sustaining the regime vis-a-vis uh, -a, -vis a very hostile world. And they think they have, the only leverage they have is the nuclear and missiles program and that they must not give this up. They must further develop it to be in a position of strength when ultimately time comes to sit at the table. So that we, I think that's pretty uh, a good understanding of what the intention is. Uh, but our, the community of nations are clearly saying to that message is that they cannot be accepted by the international community as a, as a nuclear power. But it's too late maybe, you know. Well, I, no, I think there is, uh, there, there is still time. Uh, time is sh sh running out, but there is still time. Uh, there were reports uh, that uh, your uh, country was preparing uh, plans uh, targeting, actually, the leader of uh, North Korea. Uh, your uh, defense minister said there was a so-called decapitation unit that was being mm -hmm. uh, set up. I mean, how seriously is 
this being considered? Well, I will not comment too much on a policy of a previous government, but this government is very clear. Uh, we do not seek a hostile policy. We do not seek regime collapse. We do not seek uh, to, to uh, advance militarily uh, above uh, the DMZ. Um, and we stand ready, should North Korea change course, we stand ready to work with it, to provide it with assistance that it needs economically. Uh, and I think that the, the uh, American policy of the four no's that Mr. Tillerson um, has very much stuck to it is very much in line with that message of non-hostility. We want North Korea back at the table to discuss denuclearization. Because this is what your president was elected on, essentially. Yes. I mean, not only, but to reach out again to yes. North Korea, but yeah. he's in an impossible position now because he was elected to make peace and he's obliged to prepare well, for peace, war. Peace, peace based upon strength. Uh, our message has been always very clear. It was not just peace and unconditional dialogue, but provocations will be met with stronger pressure and sanctions. And, and we've been very much a part of that buildup of the sanctions, but always with the additional message that should North Korea change course, should it see the point of these pressures and sanctions, should it change course, then there is a, you know, a di you know, opportunity for dialogue for a better future. Do you think uh, Donald Trump is on the same line exactly, or that he could go further than you would like? I think the fundamental premise of our approach vis-a-vis -vis this challenge is the same. It's much pressure, much sanctions, and all options on the table to reinforce that message, but ultimately a, a peaceful solution to this. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Foreign Minister. Thank you very much for watching this edition of the interview here on France 24.